Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Happy Thursday. My name is Jim Bachman. I'm with Grow and Fortify. I'm the Director of Communications for the Maryland Distillers Guild, and I'm happy to be joining you for today's Thirsty Thursday. We're going to have a great conversation with Brad over at Lost Ark Distilling. I'm really looking forward to this chat. Um, first time I met Brad was several years ago at, a, at an event in Howard County, and I was thrilled to taste his spirits. Um, really great representation of things that were being done here in Maryland. They were a really young brand. Uh, so it was really, really cool to uh, kind of get to know them and learn about their business when I was back in the beer world. Uh, and now that I'm working for the Distillers Guild and do work on their behalf, it's really great to know that uh, Brad's still at it, making great products, distilling wonderful spirits and uh, producing great things. So uh, before we get started with Brad and before I introduce him, I do want to make sure everybody remembers Maryland's distilleries are open for business despite all the craziness in the world right now. You can order uh, distilled spirits for direct uh, curbside pickup, carry out. Many distilleries are doing delivery to your home. So check with your favorite distillery, find out how you can support them, how you can get their spirits, uh, or ask your favorite local uh, retailer. Go to your favorite local liquor store and ask, hey, where are your Maryland spirits located? And they should be happy to help you out. Um, we have a new article up from WTOP today, uh, the alcohol beverage services from Montgomery County, who we had on a couple of weeks ago have made a big push for uh, everybody's New Year's resolution to be to support Maryland distilleries, wineries, and breweries in 2021. So if you have the opportunity to do that, please take that opportunity and support these local businesses. We appreciate it. And uh, visit MarylandSpirits.org to review that article. Um, without further ado, here's my friend Brad. Brad, how are you? Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm well, man. Thank you. Uh, great to see you. I'm very happy to have you on solo. We had you on for one of our roundtables uh, during Maryland Spirits Month, but it's great to have you on just to talk about your brand. Yeah, happy to be back. Haven't seen you since last year, so. I know. It's been a while, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so before we uh, get into the spirits that you're producing right now and kind of everything that's going on there, do you mind kind of sharing with everyone the background of Lost Ark Distilling, what you guys have been up to for the last few years and kind of what started your business? Oh man, that's like Odin Pandora's box. That's a lot. I feel like we've been around forever, but it's it's only been uh, well. We just had our four year anniversary, so a uh, good four years. Yes, yeah, this whole thing started back, I guess, in 2014 um, when I sort of came up with the idea to open a distillery, and uh, from day one, just went running with it. You know, back then when the industry was was fairly young, um, I'd say well, I'd say really young. There were a few big players then, but really young industry and just getting information, figuring out how to do this thing was was crazy. So uh, just finding out, um, being one of the first distilleries right here in Central, Central Maryland and, and finding a county and a, a local area that would just allow us to do it was a bit of a challenge and then getting going. But I was a home brewer. I originally started in beer too. Um, still love my beer. Happy to be neighbors with Hysteria. Shout out to those guys. Um, but yeah. I just wanted to take those skill sets that I had and and build upon them and, and challenge myself and had always wanted a business since I was a kid. And, you know, I found myself seeing a, a kind of a blossoming industry, a skill set that I had and an opportunity here in Maryland to, to jump into it. Um, so a lot of cool Maryland history, which we talked about a little bit on the last uh, video we did with you guys. But yeah, and, and I knew it was starting out that I wanted to make something that just everyone can enjoy. You know, I, I didn't need it to be so boutique, so top shelf that um, people didn't understand what it was that we made and I didn't want to be bottom shelf, um, cheap stuff either. So we put our heart and soul into everything that we make here. Um, I wanted to portray that from day one. We'd use as many local ingredients as we can. Um, all of our rums are exclusively made with sugar that we get from Domino Sugar in Baltimore. They have been a fantastic partner in supporting us and, and even through the pandemic and donating us sugar so we can make hand sanitizer, things like that. So. Uh, we do everything we can to support them. They're one of the oldest manufacturing plants in Maryland, support um, hundreds of jobs. So we're, we're a proud partner of theirs. And um, But yeah, back to the, to the good stuff. Um, you know, we started making our rum early on, started making some whiskey. And um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really have a taste for rum, you know, starting the distillery. I didn't know much about it. I didn't understand it. It's such a big convoluted category from all around the world. Rum tastes different from everywhere. And, you know, I, I, I guess you could say kind of took advantage of that or didn't understand it. And the more I got into it, and, and honestly, the more I tried to make it, I realized how hard it actually is to make good rum. And that was the difficult part. And so I started to gain this real, real big respect and, and love for it. Um, so 
here we are four years later and I'm still working on recipes, still trying to um, make the best rum that we can. You know, we feel like I, I took a lot of time, honestly, over this last year during the pandemic and revised a lot of our recipes and processes and worked really hard on really dialing in exactly how we want to make our products. And that way we can start being consistent, make really good stuff. And um, I think we're almost there. I'm, I'm really happy with what we have now. But yeah, just become this huge fan of rum over time and uh, super proud of the products that we put out. We did a repack this year. We rebranded all of our bottles and packaging and added new flavors. Um, it's been a year of challenges, a year of growth. Uh, we added this really cool um, new product over the last couple of months in collaboration with the Getz family in Baltimore. They make the caramel creams and cowtail candies that you've probably been eating your entire life since you were a, you were a kid. Uh, so we made a caramel creams liqueur in collaboration with them. And we also launched a, a curated brand of bourbon. It's called Trailblazer. So super excited about that and learning and getting through the challenges of, of blending and finishing. And, um, you know, I thought all the work was in distilling and putting it into barrel and waiting. But little did I know how much work goes into to blending a really good, solid, small batch whiskey. So, yeah, it's been a great year. Um, excited to be here. Excited to see a new year start. Excited for new products and and meeting new people and getting people back in the tasting rooms, hopefully finding some type of normal going forward. Um, we've had some really good luck with outdoor seating and we have a few really dedicated groups that'll come on the weekends and they know we're safe and spread out and it's kind of their safe place. It's their one place they go every week to get out of the house and out of work. So uh, we're looking forward to inviting those people back every weekend. But yeah, I mean, back to the beginning though, a little bit about our story, Lost Ark, why we're called Lost Ark. Um, like I was saying, I really wanted to embrace local. I really wanted to tell a story. And Maryland has such a rich history. Um, being in, in kind of the northeastern section of the United States, this is an area where some of those first settlers and, and colonial people arrived um, in the 1600s. And Maryland was formed in 1634, which we used to carry a corn whiskey, which we called 1634. But um, I wanted to embrace that history and those people and honor them in a way um, the first people came to Maryland, sent to colonize Maryland, came in 1634, left England in 1633, took a few months to get here, but they came over on two ships called the Ark and the Dove. Now, I don't know if you've been on a cruise before, a carnival cruise or whatever, but the two little wooden boats they came over in the 1600s um, didn't have lounge chairs, pools, or um, midnight pizza buffets. So it was kind of a rough time. Not everyone made it. Uh, those were some really brave people that came here to a brand new land had to build their own roads, their houses and farm to survive. It, it was a rough time. So um, they also had to do everything by hand. And to me, when I started reading this history and, and understanding it a little bit, knowing that they had to do everything by hand with what they could source locally, it just spoke to me. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. So we just said that it's a lost art that people do things that way and to honor those people, that Maryland history um, and the ship they came over on. That's how we came up with Lost Ark. I think that's a great story and a, a really nice run for the name. And if my eyes don't deceive me, it looks like you've got a bottle of 1634 over your shoulder up there. I think you're right. Yeah, we're still sitting up there. We have a few bottles left. I'm not making it anymore, but it's still up there. Uh, that was one of the things that drew me to talk to you the first time I met you was I was working for a brewery that had 1634 ale and you had your 1634 right. whiskey. And we were like right behind each other at the uh, at the event. So uh, that started a great conversation. And I was impressed with what you were doing then. And uh, that carries on to today. Um, I really like your kind of sense that last year was a great year for a, a, an industry that really took a lot on the chin and, and had a lot to worry about and a lot to lose. Um, we're seeing that Maryland's distilleries are doing a really great job of holding things together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're one of several distilleries that last year took the opportunity to really re-identify what your business was about and what you were intending to do uh, as you start to mature. And I think that that's a, a really cool thing to show that the focus and the intent is really there in a lot of uh, our state's small distilleries and their, their, your focus and their focus, your colleagues, is to continue to produce things exceptionally well and really strike it down on the things that you know you can create and recreate with mm -hmm. uh, impeccable precision every time. So I, I commend you for that. I think that's a, a really great thing to be doing. Um, I was going to ask if your desire to kind of focus in and hone in on rum was a consumer driven desire or was that something that you personally were like, Hey, these other recipes are kind of not, not really hitting the mark for what we're trying to accomplish. And we, we want to be honed in. 
did you just see that your rums were doing exceptionally well and wanted to take advantage of that? Well, it was probably a little bit of a few different things. Um, I tend to be a little bit OCD, a little bit perfectionist. And as I worked through these recipes through the years, and I was just never 100% satisfied with the product I was making up until, say, 12 to 18 months ago. So I really honed in and focused heavily on trying to make that recipe the best that I could, make the best rum that I possibly could with the equipment and resources that I had. So just diving into drinking as much rum as I could, um, collecting from all over, you know, just just training my palate and then training my palate to understand what everything tastes like throughout the process and then finally getting the final product that I like. Um, so that was that was honestly a big part of it. I just wanted to make sure that before I expanded, went into anything else or put my time and attention in, into other parts of the business, that the one thing we were doing the most of, we were doing it the best that we could. So uh, that was really probably the biggest part of the decision. And now don't get me wrong. I love bourbon. I love rye. Um, it's always been a passion of mine. And we're definitely trying to find a way back into it. And I don't know if you remember this, but we did release our own um, bourbon back in December of uh, 2019. So a little over a year ago now. And it was only one batch. I aged them in very small 15 gallon barrels. Um, it came out good. Um, we sold out in 90 minutes that day, which, you know, for me, just the bittersweetness of making something and working so hard on it and waiting two whole years and then it's gone in 90 minutes was was so bittersweet. But um, I wasn't super happy. Just again, me being OCD and 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 perfectionist about it. I wasn't happy with what the 15 gallon barrel gave the distillate. It just didn't seem to me that it, it allowed it to reach its full potential. So I completely stepped back from it. And I said, if, if we're going to do this going forward, I want it to be in 53 gallon barrels. I want to age longer and I want this to be right. So just as I took my time to get the rum right, I wanted to take my time and make sure that any whiskey that we put out is right. So in the meantime, um, we had restaurants and liquor stores asking us, emailing us, calling us, hey, can we do uh, barrel picks? We want to do store picks. Can we do private label for our restaurant, et cetera? So we pulled in um, some barrels of bourbon, about four years old, You know, curate, went and tasted, curated, brought it in and uh, started doing that. And then the pandemic hit. So we're left sitting with a bunch of barrels of bourbon. Restaurants are closed. And um, I start taking the time to go back, pop them all open and taste them. And I realized that the same distillate made on the same day, going into the same type of barrel, uh, put it in the same warehouse on the same floor and sat there for four years, that when you pull it back out, that every single barrel tasted different. Now, I, I, I knew that barrels were, were a little bit different, but I didn't realize how vastly different. And then I just stood there one day and tasting them all. And it hit me like, what do I do with these? How, how do I make a whiskey in a bottle that's consistent when all of these are different? And then there was my next challenge, right? So we came out of the pandemic um, over the summer, really thinking about what we were going to do with these. And and we decided to launch um, our Trailblazer brand. It's a curated um, bourbon brand. And um, I'll show you the bottle here. So it's got that nice foil. It, it fits in with the family of our other labels as well. So it's all, it all looks the same. Um, but, you know, we started working through those and, and a couple of the barrels just really stood out, you know, and I said, well, these have to be single barrels. Like these are far above and beyond the other barrels that we have. The, the, the flavor, the aroma, the mouthfeel, it all is, is just exceptional. So we released those as single barrels. We just released one for our anniversary in December. It was a uh, barrel was filled on November 22nd, 2016. I dumped it on November 22nd, 22nd of 2020, and then we released it for our four year anniversary. So four years to the day. Um, and then the rest of them we took and I'm doing some finishes like Jamaican rum cask. I've got some in maple barrels, maple syrup barrels. Um, I'm looking for port and sherry. Do it, we're just going to do all kinds of stuff and experiment. But um, the one thing I'm super proud of is our small batch. It takes so much work to, to figure out which barrels from these different flavors, whether you've got a thin mouth fill with a bright grassy uh, flavor and um, a light caramel aroma versus something that's deep and dark fruit. Um, you know, how do you match those and get consistency? And that's really what we're working through right now with the with the Trailblazer. So super pumped about that. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. I was going to say the beauty of these single barrel releases for you is that you're going to give your uh, 
consumer audience a really great opportunity to see the difference in how your distillate turns out based on where it's being finished. I think that's really cool. I think it's going to give, you know, it's going to give your consumer a reason to come back and want to explore more what you're doing within that line. That's really, really neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely something to be said for, for going out and, and growing your own corn, being a farm distillery and having Maryland corn and, um, making your own whiskey from scratch. And I'm definitely, we're definitely going to keep doing that, but we're still years away from having distillate. It's ready from, from us doing it from scratch. But in the meantime, I'm so happy and excited that we, we curated these barrels so that I can learn now to me is the even harder part of blending and, and batching. Um, I'm, I'm just excited about it all together. Well, I think that's a really cool skill that you're uh, kind of learning on the fly and as a, as a part of what you're doing overall, you're mm-hmm. you know, able to put your palate to work and showcase what your brand is going to be with your, your personal take on it, which is really kind of a, a great thing for, for guests to learn about when they come in and visit you and mm-hmm. for the consumer as a whole, learn about more uh, across the industry. I don't think many people put a lot of stock in what happens to bring all these flavors together, maybe from different barrels or you know, different batches to ensure that you end up with a product that matches a level of consistency or at least of quality that mm-hmm. you want to put out with your name on it. Yeah. One of the little stories I always tell is if you were to go to the grocery store to buy, say you're cooking out hot dogs and you need a bottle of ketchup. If you were to look at the ketchup bottles on the shelf and one of them is really thin and light colored and the bottle with the same label, same exact thing next to it is really dark and thick. You're immediately going to think like, what's wrong with one of these bottles? I'm not going to buy either one of them. So just finding consistency and flavor and mouthfeel and aroma and color, it's super hard. It's, it's not easy at all. It's a huge challenge. So uh, for the folks that are watching right now or viewing uh, when this isn't live who may be curious, where exactly are you located? So when they do come back to uh, visit you, because I know you said you're, you're reopening this weekend after a little uh, winter hiatus. Um, where, where do they find you so they can come and support you? And then we'll jump right into your spirits. Yeah, so we're off of Burger Road in Columbia, so pretty centrally located off 295, 95, right between D.C., Baltimore, um, off of Snowden River Parkway, if you're familiar with Columbia. So we're pretty easy. And we're right next door to uh, Hysteria Brewing Company. And then between the two of us, we have an awesome new place called Bullhead Pit Beef. So you can come grab some beer, cocktail, and get yourself some barbecue. Well, that sounds like a good reason to get out. So... uh Let's jump into it. We uh, are learning about the fact that you're now hyper-focused on what's going on in the rum game. You gave me a big list of rums that you're producing. So Mm -hmm. why don't we walk through kind of the rums that you want to share with people and talk about what makes them stand out. And then we'll get to that uh, really interesting caramel creams liqueur and uh, talk about what's going on there. Sure. I'm just going to start at the beginning. Um, Our first product, the base for everything we make is our Lady Anne white rum. I get asked all the time, every tour, every tasting that I ever give, people always ask me, which one is your favorite? And I I always kind of joke, it's like picking your favorite kid, right? But everybody really has a favorite kid. They just don't say it. Um, But And then I I take it a step further and say, it's kind of like taking off all your clothes with the white rum, right? It's all out there. So with the white rum, we don't flavor it. We don't add sugar. It's not barrel aids. There's nothing added to it or taken away. It just is what it is. So when you take off all your clothes and it's all out there, that's our white rum. So if I make a mistake or make a change or change the temperature or a way we do our distillation, it's all out there for you to see. You can taste it. You know it. It's a direct reflection of my work as the distiller. So I'm super proud of that one. And I have to get it right for all the rest of the flavors to be right. But my goal for it, uh, we use dark brown sugar. So we're not heavy molasses. We're not aiming for this Jamaican style with heavy ester rum. We're really going for a light rum that works well in cocktails, plays well with all the cocktail ingredients. And um, for that, we distill our rum all the way up to 180 proof during the second distillation. So it comes off um, very light. Um, But this one, perfect perfect mojito rum, perfect in daiquiris. It just plays so well in, in the cocktail. So that that's what we do with this one. To take it a step up, we use that white rum and then we add spices to it. That creates our Terra Maria spiced rum, which is Latin for Mary's land. So this is our Terra Maria spiced rum. So we add cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, ginger, um, orange peel, vanilla, um, and all of those, those spices, we, we add whole spices. So all the spices soak in the rum like tea for a few days. Um, then we add the smallest hint of sugar. And the only reason we do that is just that little bit of sugar helps blend the spice flavors and aromas together so that they're not chopped up and separate as you taste it. Um, 
It just helps it be more consistent in flavor. So it's a very tiny amount. So those are our two core rum products that we start with. They're both 80 proof. Um, now to take it a step further, um, there's lots of flavored rums on the market. And um, I wanted to take my stab at it. But again, in my sort of tradition of myself being OCD and, and perfectionist, I wanted to figure out how to get flavor that tasted like the flavor it's supposed to be. It's kind of like eating a grape Jolly Rancher. It doesn't It's never tasted like a real grape, right? Um, so the one I'm most proud of, I would say, is probably our coconut. Um, I don't want it to taste like um, sunscreen, I guess you could say. Uh, we want it to taste like real, like the real meat of a coconut. So we actually soak coconut in the rum for a few days, real shredded coconut, the white meat part. And then when we proof it down, instead of using water like the other rums, we actually use um, coconut water. So we get that nice natural coconut flavor without being overly syrupy, overly dramatic with the flavor. It just tastes like real coconut. That's and again, fascinating. It plays so well in cocktails. It's so good without, you know, without standing out and, you know, pineapple juice and orange juice are so dominant in flavor. If you have a rum that's in there that outplays a pineapple juice and an orange juice, then it's not working well in the cocktail, in my opinion. You need something that just blends well. Um, next, we have our vanilla. And I don't know what happened in the vanilla market over the last few years, but it's like 10 or 15 bucks for one vanilla bean. So I had to promptly find an alternative to vanilla beans and vanilla, vanilla paste and um, I had gone to look for some flavors and, and stuff, and I just couldn't find anything at work. So um, what I ended up doing was find two or three different flavor types, like extracts and flavors, and combining them to make my own flavor um, so that we get the most natural vanilla flavor that we can get. And that's our Shipley's vanilla. So again, you can put that in a uh, like a Coke, make a vanilla Coke, it's delicious. Um, if you ever had an orange cream soda and put some of that vanilla in it, it's amazing. You can pour it over ice cream, you can put it in your coffee. It works well in so many different things. And then our last flavored rum, by the way, these uh, flavored rums are 60 proof. So we're right on the edge of being a liqueur, but we're still considered a flavored rum because we're 60 proof or over. And these are sweet. We do sweeten these quite, quite a bit. Um, but this is our best seller for a couple of years now um, before we release the coconut and vanilla, but this is toasted hazelnut and coffee. So we actually get real hazelnuts. We toast them, crunch them up, soak them in the white rum for a few days until we get a nice honey color, nice nutty, toasty flavor. Um, filter those out. And then just like the coconut, when we proof it down, instead of using water, we use actual cold brew coffee that we get from a local roaster. And primarily we've been using coffee from, uh, it's called Brewing Good Coffee Company from over in Savage Mill. Just a small two person company. Uh, I think it's husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend, and uh, they import the beans, roast them all right there. And a cool little story about that. It's kind of like when customers come to see me and do a tasting and you might leave with just the slightest little buzz. You know, you tasted a few things, you enjoyed yourself. Um, I went there that day and we tasted like a dozen different coffees to figure out which bean was going to work. And I left with a buzz, but it was the opposite kind. I was, I was like this when I left the place with a caffeine buzz. It was cool, but um, but yeah, real coffee in that, a little bit of caffeine in it. Um, it doesn't have that fake like um, hazelnut creamer flavor. It has that nice, natural, nutty hazelnut flavor that you kind of get in the aftertaste after you swallow. But you can put that in your coffee. You can mix it with cream, pour it over ice cream. It works well in so many different things. So that's our core rum line up there. How are the uh, flavors... How, how are you determining which flavors you want to put out? Is it just kind of like, hey, man, this is the flavor that I'm really dying for and I'd like to see how it goes? Or are you getting feedback from your consumer that's like, hey, Brad, we really love this. Do you mind uh, getting a flavor like vanilla out to us or something like that? Well, what I did is I just did a little bit of research and I thought about what would um, what would play best in cocktails, what we could put in the most amount of cocktails and what would be. Uh, taste friendly. So when we put this in front of people and you taste it, um, to me, it doesn't it doesn't really resonate with everyone. If you have a list of 17 ingredients and this far out extravagant flavor profile that no one truly understands. So really what I wanted to do is just uh, keep it simple. We're going to have a vanilla rum and we're going to make it taste like vanilla. Nothing else. We're not going to have toasted cherry limeade vanilla. It's just going to be vanilla, right? So we're not going over the top. And that's really what I wanted to do is just dial it down, be simple and have a great flavor that plays well in cocktails. Um, so we did get a little bit of consumer feedback plus whatever I saw in the market that I thought we could compete in an area. And um, that's kind of what we did. I think it's also very cool, this idea of uh, proofing down using 
these ingredients. It's it's something that I never would have imagined mm-hmm. being the way to, to approach that problem. You know, the problem being, how do I get this flavor there? Um, I think that's great. Yeah, it, I mean, it just made sense in my head when I'm sitting here looking at my rum making uh, trial batches and well, I'm an 80 proof and I got to get to 60 and I need it to taste like coffee. But if I go to 60 and then add coffee, then I'm not at 60 anymore. So I, why don't I just use coffee to go from 80 to 60? And it, there you it go. naturally came to me and it works. It works really well. Um, do you have any, I, I know you mentioned a couple of things that stood out for the vanilla and the coconut. Do you have any great recommendations for that coffee rum? Um, the coffee rum? Or you just say throw it over ice and enjoy. You can. Uh, a lot of people drink it that way. One of the drinks we made, um, darn, what's the name of it? I can't think of the name of it, but it's, um, we mix it with a little bit of cold brew, a little bit of hazelnut creamer, um, and of course the rum, um, whipped cream on top, dash of cinnamon. It's, it's perfection. Oh, there you go. That sounds delicious. Uh, so let's move away from the rum world now. You've got this awesome product that uh, you worked with another local company to concoct and create. They, uh, the company that you worked with is Getz's. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have kind of been reaching out and working with craft beverage manufacturers in the state. I know a couple of breweries have done some things with them. And uh, obviously you guys have released a product with them. Can you kind of tell us about what working with them was like and what the product turned out to be? Oh, they're great people. Um, I think I've been eating that candy, like I said earlier, since I was a small kid. I think everyone's had a cow tail from 7-Eleven or Wawa or something at some point. Um, but uh, apparently I met the owner um, his name's Mitch. I think he's, and forgive me if I say this incorrectly, I think he's fifth generation. His great, great, great grandfather started the Getz family um, business back in 1895 in Baltimore. So they just celebrated their 125th anniversary, anniversary, which is super cool. And it's great to work with such a historical um, part of Maryland. But um, I was doing another event here in Howard County, the Taste of Howard County, and apparently um, they came around and did a tasting. I had no idea who they were. They were just more people in line to get a tasting, right? So uh, fast forward a year or two, and uh, they sent us an email looking for hand sanitizer. And then the email conversation just expanded into, hey, let's do a collab. And um, you know, I think you're right. They did do a couple of collaborations. I don't know if it was with different breweries or the same one a couple of different times, but they did uh, caramel creams. Was it an oatmeal stout or something like that? I don't remember. Yeah, I think it might have been. Yeah, which went over really well. I think everyone loved it. Um, originally, I was thinking of doing, because I had these during COVID, we had these extra barrels of bourbon. So what I said, why don't we do a bourbon cream? That would make sense. But once I got to playing with it, I got back to my rum roots, and it just made sense to do this caramel creams liqueur with a rum base. Um, so super cool because not only the history and getting to work with such cool people and um, do a collab with such a cool brand, but we use cream from the same company that they get their cream from to make the candy. And then there's a local um, Baltimore based flavor company that they use the flavor to flavor the candy as well. So we get that same cream and the same caramel and vanilla flavor from, from Baltimore to make this. So same, some of the same ingredients and um, there you go. I'll show you the bottle. So this has been so hot. We're barely keeping up making it, but this is delicious. You can use this in your coffee. You can use it with our hazelnut and coffee rum. Um, you can just drink it straight. It's so good. It's like a little sweet treat. It's only 30 proof. I like that uh, you've got a good suggestion or a list of suggestions for that one, because I think that that's one that I would just be enjoying little nips of here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just pour yourself right after dinner, just a little glass. Enjoy it. Yeah. It's really good. Is it nostalgic enough that it takes you right back to being a kid popping the, popping a caramel from the, from the convenience store? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it does a little bit in a way. And I don't I don't necessarily say I would take it take back. Maybe take me back to a couple of days ago the last time I bought one. No, there you go. <laughs> so it's not too too long ago of a stretch. Right, right. Well, that's awesome. It's really nice to see that there's the ability for these unrelated businesses really to collaborate and tell a story about what's mm-hmm. going on in Maryland and uh the Getz family is is a great great business to get behind and to have have on your side in a collaboration like this. You get a lot of I think you can take a lot away from them, uh, learn a lot about their process and what they do and kind right. of their dedication to their craft and, mm-hmm. you know, introduce that to your own, your own business. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's kind of our tagline for Lost Ark is own your craft. And it doesn't matter if you're making candy or rum or whiskey, or if you're a, a paralegal or a doctor or nurse, it, 
own your craft, wake up every day, own your craft, no matter what it is, give it your best, you know, work your hardest, put, put everything into it. And um, they certainly do that and have been, have been around for a long time, owning their craft and creating amazing candy that's, I think, distributed internationally all around the world. Uh, so speaking of distribution and, and wide availability, where can consumers who may not uh, think that it's extra convenient to get to Columbia find Lost Art Distilling products uh, in Maryland? So we have a spirit locator on our website, lostartdistilling.com slash spirits. Scroll down, you'll see the locator. It's an interactive Google map that you can use. Um, click the little button in the top left. It'll give you a drop down list. We have it separated by restaurants and liquor stores. So you can look at the list or you can just find your area on the map or wherever you are, find something that's closest to you. Um, we're constantly adding accounts right now. We're growing really big in distribution. So excited about that, excited to get our products out in front of more people. Um, we just hired our first salesperson. We just started this last week um, to work side by side with our distributor. And um, so we're super pumped about where all that's going, but lots of locations right now. If you don't have um, your local liquor store, your local hotspot that you'd like to stop at, if you don't have it there, shoot us an email, we'll get it in there. Um, biggest thing you can do to help us in that area is make sure you ask for us. Go in, talk to the owner or whoever's working that day and continue to ask for us. If no one's asking for us, they won't put it on the shelf. So keep doing that. That's a big help for us. Yeah. Let your local uh, liquor store owner know that you, you would like to see these brands and your demand is usually enough to get those, those products right through the door and, and on mm -hmm. the shelf the next time you're there. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to review the uh, comments and you're watching this either now or at some point in the future, uh, we do have that spirits locator uh, URL in the comments. You can click that and go check out where uh, Brad spirits can be found. Awesome. Um, what's on the horizon? What do the next couple of months look like? What kind of projects are you working on? Is it too early to share anything? Um, not too early to share anything. Um, we're really expanding and working on building out our trailblazer line. So again, um, just batching. We're working on batching right now. Our, our next, our second batch, our small batch. Um, so that will be coming out in the next week or two. Um, we just released that single barrel for our anniversary. We have a maple syrup barrel that will probably drop in the next 60 days or so. I'm tasting it about every two weeks now. It's about six or seven months old. I'm really excited about where that one has gone. Um, so it was originally a bourbon barrel that um, was dumped and then held maple syrup for about a year. And now we've put bourbon back into it. So just pulling all those deep notes out of it is pretty incredible. So I'm excited about that. Um, I'm also working on adding one more product to our core lineup of rums. The one thing we've been missing is a dark rum. So we're working on that and, and finalizing all of our, our um, ingredients and how we're going to make it. And um, we've also started taking our used bourbon barrels, our dumped, freshly dumped bourbon barrels, and putting rum into those. So we're starting to barrel age rum now, too. So we'll start to age that. And, and again, that's a two or three, four year process. So we're going to sit on those just like we're sitting on our whiskey. That's awesome. Well, we can't wait to see where that all goes and uh, mm -hmm. see all these new products hit the uh, hit the shelves and hit the lineup. It's exciting to see uh, kind of the growth and the expansion that you're going through with with uh, all of these great spirits that you're producing. Um, one more time for everybody who's watching, they can come visit you in Columbia at your tasting room. Are you doing curbside pickup options for people and carry out? Yep, you can visit our website, lostartdistilling.com. You can buy online. Um, you can have it shipped directly to your home now. So we're shipping all throughout Maryland. If so if you're far away, you're listening to this, something sounds good to you like vanilla, coconut, whatever, we'll send it right to your front door. Um, if for some reason you are local, don't want to pay to have it shipped. Um, when you go in there and you go to checkout, instead of choosing the shipping option with UPS, just pick, click, uh, pick up at distillery. We'll pull the order for you. Be ready the next weekend that we're open. So right now we're open Friday nights, four to eight and Saturdays, 12 to six. Very cool. Well, if you're, uh, in the mood to try any of these great rums or uh, this caramel creams liqueur uh, and even that wonderful bourbon, go ahead and uh, visit the Lost Ark website, place your order there and uh, show them your support. And uh, if you feel like swinging by and having a, a great sample or two and a couple cocktails, that's the place to go to. Apparently there's great food and uh, some wonderful beer next door for you to enjoy. Uh, Brad, thanks so much. Can you uh, let people know where to find you guys on Instagram and Facebook? Yeah, uh, facebook.com slash Lost Art Distilling. And then Instagram is at Lost Art Distilling. Um, find us on either one, follow us. Make sure you're staying up to date. Lots of cool stuff coming, new products, a few things we didn't talk about. So 
Um, going to be another fun year. We're excited to get started. Well, that's great. And uh, thanks for helping us ring in 2021, being the first guest of our uh, Thirsty Thursday chats. This is uh, always a wonderful time for us to catch up and let the let the community know a little bit more about what you guys are doing there at the distillery and put a face to the name. So thanks for joining me this afternoon. If you'd like any more information about what the uh, Maryland Distillers Guild is up to, please visit us at MarylandSpirits.org. You can learn about all of our state's distilleries that are operational there. Uh, and also visit GrownFortify.com about... Uh, uh, looking for information about uh, value-added agriculture and the uh, efforts that we have going on to support the agriculture industry in the state. So, Brad, thanks again for all your time. I look forward to chatting with you in person and uh, trying some of that caramel creams liqueur. I was going to say the same. Appreciate you having me. Can't wait to do it in person. And uh, I'm going to go have a drink. It's Thursday right. day after all, right? That sounds great, man. Always a pleasure, yeah. and I'll see you soon. Same to you. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye.